It's mystery time. Time now for the best in mystery. Tonight, on Masters of Mystery, an exciting melodrama titled Death Walked In. Get away from that phone or I'll kill you. You're bluffing, Julie. I know you are. You are wrong, Ned. I wasn't bluffing. Good evening. This is Don Dowd, your host for Mystery Time, back again to introduce another in ABC Radio's great Monday through Friday lineup of mystery dramas. Every night at this time, a new and different story. Our drama tonight on Masters of Mystery was written by Joseph Ruskall and is titled Death Walked In. The action of our story covers the course of only a few days, but I think you'll agree with me that the moments are filled with emotional impact and suspense. So now, live on Masters of Mystery, Death Walked In. You know me, Ed Grimes, real estate. Respected, a solid citizen, till this happened, till death walked in. It doesn't always lurk in dark corners. It can come into your parlor like it did in the world. Hannah's in mine. It could be someone innocent looking, like the attractive young woman with books under her arm who rang our doorbell one afternoon. Yes, you're Mrs. Grimes. Yes, I'm Mrs. Grimes. Well, may I speak to you a moment? A friend of yours, Mrs. Tillingham, sent me. Oh, yes. Please come in. Thank you. I'm sorry I kept you waiting so long, but I'm simply morbid about answering the door when my husband's away. You say Mrs. Tillingham sent you? Why, yes. You see, I just placed one of these valuable library editions in her home and... Well, she mentioned you as a likely prospect. Oh, you're selling something. Oh, no, absolutely nothing, Mrs. Grimes. We're practically giving it away. This complete set of encyclopedias, uh, just as you see them in this brochure. You see, we're giving them to special and selected families just for a limited time and as a special advertising campaign. Oh, no, no, not today. Well, Thank practically you. nothing more than the price of the postage. This complete world famous. Yeah, but we already have a set of encyclopedias. You're... Oh, you're not from hereabouts, are you? No, I, I work town to town. I just arrived here. From where? Carterville. Carterville. Did you do well there? So-so. Oh, you look tired and cold. Come on into the living room and sit a while. Oh, thank you. Can I make you a cup of tea, Miss... Uh, Smith. Julie Smith. No, thanks. Oh. Oh, those gorgeous drapes. It's so right. So awfully right and so expensive. <laughs> How nice of you to say so, Miss Smith, but they're really not. Oh, what I wouldn't give for a home like this. <sighs> but then I'd have to have a nice man to go with it, wouldn't I? To keep it up. Oh, stay like that gentleman there on the grand piano. Oh, oh, oh why, how observant you are. <laughs> yes, that's my husband's photograph. But would you call him handsome? Not handsome, exactly, but strong and solid. Oh, will he be home soon? Looks like he's detained at his office. Well, perhaps if I came around tomorrow at this time. Well, I can't promise a thing. I'll ask him. But do come around anyway. We'll have a cup of tea. Encyclopedia. Are you out of your mind, Hannah? Why do we need another set? We've got one. Nothing doing. Oh, dear, she'll hear you. Hear me? Where is she? In the kitchen. This is twice she's called now. Oh, my heart melts for that poor girl. She's had such a hard life, bringing up a large family, canvassing house to house. Oh, we just can't turn her away without a sale. It, it wouldn't be charitable. Darling, do you have to let in every stray alley cat that comes to the door? Now, Ed, don't talk that oh, way. I... Here she comes. Oh, there you are, Julie. Hey, come and meet my husband. Ed, this is Miss Julie Smith. In reference to those books I was telling you about? <clears throat> How do you do? 
How do you do, Mr. Grimes? I feel I already know you from that picture on the piano. Now, Mr. Grimes, about the encyclopedia. Eighty-five dollars. What made me do it? Shelling out 85 bucks when we've already got a set. No one forced you, Ed. You could have said no. Why did you do it? That's just it. I don't know. She looked at me and I... I don't know. Hmm, devil take her. Well, what's done is done. It's a good kind deed anyway. She's delivering the books to us tomorrow night. And when she comes, I want you to put a pleasant face on it and be civil to her. Please, Ed. Uh, would you like more tea? Oh, yes. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> My. Oh, those books look lovely. <laughs> of course, I have no idea where we're going to put them. <laughs> uh, where do you live, Miss Smith? Well, I'm... I'm homeless at the moment, I'm afraid. My landlady locked me out. I, I owe rent. Oh. I, I'm not doing half as well as I did at Carterville. <laughs> if I could only... Find some place to stay tonight. You, you see, I'll have plenty of money tomorrow for my Carterville commission. <coughs> well, I think. Oh, you my poor God. thing. You have caught an awful cold. And now look, my husband's due home any minute, and I'm sure he won't mind a bit if you stay here with us for a few days. Grimes back for marketing. Oh, and I got the most wonderful rose. Oh, Julie, you're an angel. But really, you shouldn't just because you're feeling uh, all right again. I'm perfectly able. No, right. no, you sit right where you are in your rocker and relax. I'll tend to these. Oh, oh, and here's your morning paper. You see, I didn't forget that either. You're a dear. Now, you just sit and read all the gossip and let me run this house. Oh, uh, did my luggage arrive? Mm, oh, just a while ago. I put it up in your room. And well, it'll only be for a few more days or so. Of course, it, your husband doesn't think... Oh, that... nonsense. You're perfectly welcome to stay a few days more, I'm sure. Oh, good heavens. Oh, oh, what's wrong? Oh, my gracious. In the very next town to listen to this, Carterville Man Confesses Wife Murder. In an astonishingly gruesome confession to police today, a Carterville merchant, Dudley C. Whipple, confessed how, that... How was the murder discovered? Conscience. That's how it was discovered. Everyone thought his wife died a natural death. There she was lying in her grave a whole week when suddenly her husband gets pangs of conscience and confesses she was poisoned. Did they live on 22 Elm Street, does it say? Why, Yes. Yes, how'd you know? Oh, I, I sold them a set of books. You did? Why, that's right. You told me you were in that town for a while. Well, imagine. Poor Mrs. Whipple. She was such a nice lady, and she had such a lovely, lovely home. Oh, that cake for tonight. Uh, did you take it out of the oven? Oh, yes, I did. Don't worry. Well, think of it. You actually sold that couple. Uh, and did Mr. Grimes like the last cake I baked? Well, of course, dear. That's very kind of you to say so, but I know he dislikes me. He he resents my presence here, I know. Why, Julie, what makes you think so? Way he avoids me. Oh, no. He hates me. He wants me out of here. Yes, he does. Oh, Mrs. Grimes, I, I owe you so much, and I'm, I'm so grateful, but I just can't stay here the way he treats oh, me. nonsense. Mr. Grimes is just as happy as I am about this little temporary arrangement. And if he isn't civil to you, I'll tell him a thing or two. Uh, do you hear me, Julie? So, uh, what are you staring at? Paula, Mrs. Grimes. You know, if you let me, I, I could really do things with it. Well, this table here, for instance. I'd put it over there. That chair could go here. So much could be done. my wife. At the dentist. She'll be back soon, Mr. Grimes. Hmm. Notice anything? Huh? Well, hey. What? Is this my house? It, it's different. Well, the whole room looks different. Well, who did it? I did. 
Oh, with your wife's consent. How do you like it? Oh, not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. It is better indeed it is. At last, find a married man with an autistic eye. Oh, why married man? I don't know. They lose a sense of beauty somehow, and wives so often take their husbands for granted. I never would. You, you remind me of someone. Who? Oh. Man in Carterville. Why? I don't know. Oh, do you mind if I turn on the radio? No. You dance. Dance? If I were alone right now, you, you know what I'd do? No, what? Dance alone. I like to dance alone. Do you mind if I do anyhow? <laughs> Go ahead. Ah, oh, I like to dance. I love to dance around and around. You're, you're very graceful, Julie. I'm young. He was a weakling, though. Who? Man in Carterville. You seem different. You don't like me, do you? What makes you think so? Why do you always avoid me? Never mind. I'll be leaving tomorrow. You will? Won't you be glad to get rid of me? You like to look at me, though, don't you? I've seen you looking at me. Like you are now. Just like you are now. Hey, think I'd make someone a nice wife? Ed, Julie came to me again in tears. With her suitcase all packed, she wanted to leave. Just because you've been behaving so brutally to her. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, that's what. Driving that poor girl to tears. <laughs> what are you looking at, Ed? Me? Hmm? Oh, I wonder why. But you look at me while you can. I'm leaving soon. Will you miss me when I'm gone? Please say you'll be nicer to her, Ed. Go out of your way the few more days she's here to make her feel at home. One of the family. Anna, that girl must go. There's something about her, I tell you. I, I have a strange feeling that for some weird reason she's wormed her way into our home in order to... To what, dear? I don't know. Maybe it's a premonition or something. I... I think that when she rang the doorbell that time, some... Oh. Anna, she's going to pack her bags and get out right now. Park here. It's a nice, lonely spot. Well? What are you waiting for? You wanted to tell me something. You started to up in my room. Took me out here. I wonder why. Listen. Julie. Julie. I knew it all the time. I knew it had come to this. I do things to you, don't I? From the moment I first saw you, I could tell. What if your frumpy old wife could see us now? Oh, shut up. I wonder what she'd say. Stop no, it, you devil. <laughs> All right. I understand. You had to slap me because you're not used to this. What's happening to me? Who are you? Where do you come from? What do you want? You. Kiss me again. Julie. Julie. I knew you couldn't send me away. We're right for each other. I like you. You want me. Bad. Add it. Then subtract. All we've got to do is subtract it. You know what I mean. What are you talking about? And what do you take me for? Some cheap thing? Oh, no, it. I come expensive, and my price is a wedding ring. Well, I'm a married man. I like married men. I want one. They've already got brick bungalows with lovely furnishings. I'd make you a real nice wife, Ed. Do you think I'd ever divorce her for you? I knew a man in Carterville said just that. He didn't like divorce either. But he wanted me bad. Real bad, like you. And in the end, 
there was another way. Oh, you're the limit. Half the time, I don't know what you're, what you're raving about. I, you're so crazy. You, you're crazy. Wonderful. Come here. Hands off, please. Drive me to the city. What? I'm grabbing the first train out of town like I told you I... Now, kindly get started. Julie, you, you can't leave now. Why can't I? Because I can't let you... No, 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 Julie, don't go now. Please, not now. Julie. That's better. I'll come back, sure. But you know what it means if I do, Ed. If I come back on one condition, you'll have to get rid of her. Sooner or later, some way or other. I declare, Mrs. State, that lively mind of yours. Ed and Julie, ridiculous. Oh, he positively just loves her. He's hardly exchanged two words with her. Oh, that's the best one I ever heard. How much longer are we going to wait, Ed? I'm not waiting any longer. We've got to get rid of Hannah. But, Julie, I... It's easy. All you do is do it. Do it quickly and it's done. Julie, I I can't. I, I can't divorce Hannah. I, I'd rather die. And, and she'd never Who's divorce... Who's talking about that? You always pretend you don't know what I mean. You know well enough. Inside, your heart jumps like mine because you know we're going to do it. No. It's the only way. Don't you be surprised how easy it is. Remember I, I once told you about that weakling from Carterville? That, that thing he used? No pain and no one would ever know. You get it in a drugstore. I can get it today and tonight at dinner you'll pretend some food spilled on your trousers. When Hannah turns, you'll... Well, I'll slip it into a cup of coffee. Well, Ed, will you or won't you? Julie, I... I'll do it. Coffee, just like you like it, Ed. Oh, Julie, don't get up. <laughs> I swear the way that girl spoils me, Ed, doesn't let me do a thing. Why, she runs this house much better than I ever could. Oh, now, Mrs. Grimes, now you just sit down. <laughs> you see that, Ed? Draws up my chair, treats me like a queen. But I have revolted. I insisted that she at least let me make the coffee. <gasps> that reminds me... <laughs> Oh, the silliest rumor I heard today. What What was it? Oh, well, it, it isn't even fit to repeat. Uh, sit down, Julie, and drink your coffee. How is it, Ed? Fine, honey. Oh, Mr. Grimes. Yes? Weren't you supposed to do something for me? Mr. Grimes? Oh, what's that, Julie? Do what? Nothing. What is it, Ed? Why, Julie, whatever are you fidgeting with that person? Oh, oh. Oh, oh, Goodness, what's wrong with you, Ed? Oh, I, I spilled some coffee on my trousers. Rub water on it quick or it'll stain. Oh, land sake, Ed, it's a new suit. Couldn't you be a little more careful? Well, it, it's, it's all right, Hannah. Just just a drop. It's delicious coffee. Mm, it does smell good, if I do say so myself. Hannah, Hannah, don't, don't. Don't what? And then nothing. Nothing. Oh, well, you are a mistake tonight. Mmm. <laughs> tastes good, too. Well, what about the movies after we get everything cleared away? Uh, there's a new picture down at the... Down at... at... Forgive me, I, I was out of my mind. You'll be all right. I'll get a doctor. Get away from that phone, Ed. Put down that phone. Drop that phone at her, I'll kill you. Hello. 
Hello. I've got a gun head. If you don't drop that phone. Hello, uh, Dr. Meadows. <laughs> don't, let you, don't believe me. You're going to put down that phone? No? You want a second bullet? Okay, then hear it. Order, Glenn. Drop that gun. No, you don't. I'm not afraid of the police. You won't take my home away from me. Not this time. Uh, my home. My beautiful home. What happened here, Mr. Crimes? You hurt bad? I'm all right, Officer Jelling. Kurt's my wife. She's been poisoned. We'll get her to the hospital right away. Oh, the girl here is dead. Hannah. Hannah? She's unconscious. We'll get her to the hospital. And then you'll come with me to headquarters. There are a few questions you'll have to answer. Questions? There's a statewide alarm out for this girl. We traced her to your home, and I was on my way over here to warn you. She was wanted in Carterville, Glen Springs, several places. Complicity in half a dozen homicides. Julia? A killer? All women are victims. Wives. Poison, just like in your wife's case. You gonna confess? Confess? Me? Uh, they usually do with a husband. But you know, Mr. Grimes, I kind of feel sorry for that girl. She was plenty confused, but strangely enough, on only one subject. You see, she was brought up in an orphanage, and she never had a home of her own in all her life. Well, let's go, Mr. Grimes. At my trial... Not one of all my friends came forward to speak a good word for me. No one but my wife, that is. She'd gotten well enough by then to be brought into the courtroom in a wheelchair. <laughs> Poor Hannah sure spoke up for me. But the jury pitied her too much to show me mercy. Anyhow, they thought her words very queer, I guess, especially when she said... He's a good man, Your Honor. It wasn't his fault, really. Not really. Sometimes, something that's not ourselves. I mean, well, maybe it was my fault. I mean to say, after all, he was away, and I really shouldn't have answered that doorbell. This is Don Dowd again, your host for Mystery Time. You have just heard Masters of Mystery, live from New York. Tonight's play, Death Walked In, was produced by Clark Andrews in association with Ronald Dawson and Robert Arthur. Featured in tonight's drama were Ann Loring, Bill Johnstone, Peggy Allenby, and Frank Butler. (laughs) 